So now we're going to take a look at the implementation of my EX13 example from my live lessons Java 8 folder. And once again, since we're stuck on the BARD, we're going to have another quote, famous quote from Hamlet, because why not? And we're going to show off how splitterators work in a couple of different ways. So here's the famous quote. This is actually a very, very ironic quote, because the person who says this quote is actually sort of a scoundrel that sends uh, people off to spy on his son and, and kind, of, uh, kind of pimps out his daughter to, uh, to the king and queen. You know, it's, it's not really a very good guy, but he had a wonderful speech where he said to his son Laertes, this above all to thine own self be true, and it must follow as the night, the day that thou canst not then be false to any man. Um, he also unloads a whole bunch of other uh, cliches on his poor son, like neither a borrower nor a lender be and stuff like that. But uh, anyway, that's sort of beside the point. So we're going to use that as our quote. And then we're going to do a bunch of things to that quote. So we're going to show off different features that we have in, in uh, the streams framework and particular splitterators and then show a couple other things too. So let's start by showing a very simple example of how a splitterator works in the first place. You can see here that if we have a, a collection, in this case, a, a list, we can say, you know, in this case, quote is a list of strings. We can say splitterator, and that will return a splitterator. And then we can basically walk through every element in the splitterator, calling try advance until it returns false. And that will then give us back each element that we're splitterating one at a time, which in this case will give out each of those strings from the famous Polonius quote, and we will print them out. So it'll print them out until there's nothing left. So that's one thing, very simple, just kind of showing that a splitterator is like an iterator on steroids that's a little bit more concise. You don't have has next and next, you just have try advance. But that's only half the story. The other part of the story is the, the try split method, which I'm gonna show you here, although it's, it's full, Blown glory doesn't manifest itself until we get into parallel streams where it really turns out to be a, a big win. But right here, I'm just going to show it off. So here we make ourselves a splitterator, which I call second half for reasons that will become clear in a moment. And then we say, hey, second half, please split yourself in half and give me back the first half. And now what's happened is when we call try split on second half, try split will automatically split the splitterator in such a way that we'll get the second half. Let's see if I can go to this thing. It may or may not work. This might be what we're looking for. So this is the try split method from the ArrayList splitterator. And you can see that it splits things in half and then it creates a new splitterator and it updates the index with the midpoint. So we end up with a new splitterator that covers the first half and we've updated the second half to point to the latter part of this thing. So that's what try split does for, for an array list, of course. And now we're going to go ahead and use the for each remaining traversal operator to traverse all the elements in the first half and print them out, followed by all the elements in the second half and print them out. So for each remaining, unlike try advance, try advance just moves ahead one at a time until we get false. For each remaining, we'll basically just go into a loop and keep looping until it gets through every element. And uh, let's see if we can find that guy here. So here's for each remaining. And you can see basically what it's doing is it's kind of walking through there and accepting each item one at a time and just doing it until we're done. Let's take a look at a couple of different ways to make a stream from a list. So this is the low level way of doing things. This is using a support method called stream support dot stream and stream support dot stream takes a splitterator and a boolean parameter and the splitterator of course is what we've been looking at this is used to split things up by the support the stream support stream factory method and then the parameter here indicates should this be a parallel stream or not if it's false it's a sequential stream or it's not a parallel stream if it's true it's a parallel stream so we go ahead and turn this into a stream using the stream support factor method. This next example is the much more conventional way of doing things, which is to use the stream method, which if you take a look, which we will do, uh, let's take a look and see if this is what we want. Whoops, that is not what we want. Let's go see if we can find what we want. 
Sometimes you have to search around a little bit. There we go. If you take a look at this implementation of stream in the collection interface, it has a default implementation, which just calls stream support dot stream, passing in the splitterator and false. And you can see that parallel stream does the same thing, except it passes in true. So how cool is that? That's pretty darn cool. So that's just a quick example, just for fun to kind of walk through and show a few ways that splitterators can be used. You honestly very rarely write splitterators like this yourself or use splitterators like this yourself. Instead, they're used by the stream framework in order to be able to split things up either into a sequential stream or much more interestingly into a parallel stream.